Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. In today's video, I want to take a look at weapon spray or simulating weapon spray. Well, obviously simulating weapon spray because we're in a game, but um, effectively, if you set up like a line trace system or a projectile system, um, you, your bullet's pretty much going to go straight. I mean, with a projectile, arguably, it's going to dip over time, but with a line trace system, it's very accurate. If you don't set up any kind of like spray um, or any sort of accuracy type uh, situation, uh, what you tend to find is your bullets are perfectly hitting every single time and that's not that realistic Now in this video, I'm not going to talk about sort of spray patterns where certain guns and certain uh, games uh, I feel like uh, Counter-Strike there'll be spray patterns. So different types of gun will have um, The spray will travel in a zigzag or pour to slightly to the right or, or something of that effect I'm not going to cover that um, but effectively, it's just a way of adding a random variance to your bullet. So a quick example here, um, which I can show you if the project loads. Here we go. Um, and I've exaggerated this for this example. Um, so if we run over to the wall here and I start shooting, you'll notice that my line traces are absolutely everywhere. Obviously, I've typed in a figure that's really high. It's unreal. I, I wouldn't use this in, in any scenario. Um, unless you've got a gun which is extremely terrible at shooting. Um, but what we can do, we can dial it down to something that's a bit more normal. Um, but I thought it'd be good to exaggerate that for, for the demo, um, just to really get the point across. So that's really what we're going to do. Each line trace's end position is going to be somewhat random, each fire. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, just a quick note, if you are interested in this laser system or the live crosser, which is the um, the green sort of arrow at the end, uh, I'll put cards or links down below for those videos uh, if you're interested in that. Um, we're not going to cover that in this video. So without any further ado, let me just um, disconnect this and we'll sort of go through it again. It's relatively simple. I can't imagine this is going to take us too long. So uh, let's just pause. Okay, so I've cleared out the uh, blueprint now so we can start afresh. So at the moment, all that's happening is we can pull out a weapon and when we click, absolutely nothing happens. Um, so what we want to do, um, now a couple of things that I like to do to, especially the ALS template, is just prevent it from being able to shoot when, um, when we're not aiming and when we're not holding a rifle. So if I was holding binoculars, I don't want to shoot. Or if I'm not holding a particular gun, I, I don't want to shoot. Um, so very quickly, what I'm going to do um, is just type in... No, I'm not. I'm going to search for my overlay state. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So... Okay, so uh, it wasn't actually in my variable section. Um, I, I, for some reason, I couldn't understand why I couldn't find it, but um, it's uh, a part of the parent, so it's not actually in my variable set here. Um, if you've ever used the ALS template, um, there's, a, there's a base character, and then all the variables that are set for the state changes are on that, and, and obviously I've made a child of it. Anyway, um, so if you type in overlay state, now this is obviously a bonus if you're going to be using the ALS template. But if you're not, um, you could you could kind of ignore this, I guess. Um, so get overlay state. Overlay state has um, a couple of options. So um, going down the list, uh, number five is the rifle. So if that equals number five, Uh, is true that means we've got the rifle in our hand um, and then the other thing we need to do um, is rotation whoa rotation state rotation state so get that and if we look here the options that we've got are uh, looking direction or aiming is number two so zero one two um, so if my rotation mode is equal to two that means we're both aiming and we have a rifle. So let's grab a branch for that. Um, yep, so quickly tidy that up. Don't spend too much time on this because it only affects a couple of people. Okay, sweet. So there we go. So if we are aiming and if we have a rifle in our hands, we can continue. Uh, the next thing we need to do is effectively just a line trace. 
Um, which I didn't really want to skip this just in case people have no idea how to make a line trace. So line trace by channel, just change the debug type to for duration and let's change the duration down to like two seconds just so it's not too long. This is actually going to draw the line on the screen for you if you've never used a line trace before. Okay, so a line trace requires a start and end uh, location. Now what I like to do is I like to get my weapons mesh and what I like to do is um, get socket location. So what we can do is we can get the actual location at the end of the barrel. And for this particular weapon, there's a socket at the end of the weapon called muzzle. Um, alternatively, what you could do is you could get your actor's location. So I'll show you two ways of doing it, but we'll, we'll do the, the, the way I'm going to do it first. Um, so get socket location uh, and that will get the, the point right at the end of the gun. Uh, then what we want to do is we also want to get the right vector. Now, typically on a line trace, you do forward vector. But for this particular asset, this the, the weapon that I've got, um, the, rotate, the actual mesh itself is rotated by 90 degrees. So the forward vector is actually off to the left. Um, so I'd need to get the right vector in this instance. Uh, then what we need to do is we need to do a multiply because effectively this is just the direction that the gun is pointing in. It's not got a distance to it. It's just um, almost like a rotation of which way are we facing. So if we do a multiply and we convert the bottom pin to a float, effectively what we can plug in here is a weapon range. So you can promote this to a variable. Now, because I've already got a weapon range, I'm just going to drag it out. Now, my weapon range has been set to 3000 by default. So we'll do a weapon range. So that's basically which way are we facing and how far in that direction do we want to go. And then what we want to do is we want to add that to our um, sort of distance. Uh, sorry, add that to our original location. And that gives us our end node and our start node is basically just the muzzle. So get the muzzle, find which directions are our forward direction or right vector for this particular mesh, uh, add a range to it, add them together, and we should have a line trace. So if we want to just quickly test that, what we want to do is grab a rifle and we shoot and we see we are hitting the mark. So the bullet comes from the barrel and hits the point where we expect it. So at this point, we don't have um, any any spray or any sort of um, variance in our accuracy. Um, for those that are not using this system, I will come back, um, I promise, to show you how to do a line trace from just the camera, um, which is also very popularly used in the industry. Okay, so effectively, at, the, at this point, let's say that this is kind of an offset. So what we do is we get where the muzzle is we get a sort of distance offset. How far in front of that do we want? And then we're adding that together. So before we plug this end node in, if we can create some sort of noise at this point um, to sort of add that variation, um, that this is the place it would be. So what we can do is we can do another add node. And we'll just plug that in. And what we want to do is we actually want to split this structure. And you can see now that we've got X, Y, and Z uh, that we can sort of like add values to. So what we can do is let's create a float. So if you create a new variable and, and, and make it a type float, I've already called mine weapon spray range. And at the moment, it's still set to the default value of 200, which was that very extreme version. Uh, but it's, it's good to get a point across. I, I found the number around 40 to 60 is, is a good sort of like spray range in, in sort of like a in a few tested styles. Anyway, um, so with our spray range, what we could do is we could use this number as sort of like a... a range value let's go 200 plus or 200 minus in my range so let's say we're aiming for the center i'm going to try and <laughs> we're aiming for the center we could go 200 higher or minus 200 lower anywhere 
in that range. And if we do that for all of the sort of um, directions, the X, Y, and the Z, then we're going to have that sort of uh, random spray. So what we can do is do random float in range. And instead of this being the minimum, what we'll do is we'll plug that into the maximum. Let's get three of these. Just like that. And then what we'll do is we'll plug this into the maximum for all of them. And then now we need a minimum. So we need the minus version of what our spray range is. So what we can simply do is just times this by minus one. Minus one. So that's going to make all of our figures uh, negative 200. So I'll plug this into the minimum. Just like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, highlight all of the nodes. Press C on my keyboard for a caption. Uh, a comment, sorry. Uh, and just put weapon. Spray. And then what we're going to do is we're going to plug each of these into one of these nodes. Just like this. There we go. And then I'll move that back a little bit. And then technically that's it. Realistically that is it. So now if we go and shoot, you'll notice that your bullet goes all over the place in sort of like a random, it could be anywhere. So let's go back and tighten that spray range up. So 200, very excessive. So let's go for 50, which is in between the 40 to 60 range that um, I think is reasonable. Uh, but obviously it depends on your game, it depends on the gun. And what you could do is you could link this to sort of like an accuracy stat. So a pistol might have a higher accuracy. So the range might be 30. Or you might have a um, an assault rifle. The, uh, the sort of accuracy might be a little bit lower. So you might want to go for uh, a spray of 60. So this is 50. So you can see where we're aiming and the sort of deviation. Obviously the closer you get, there's less room for that to be noticeable but if you start coming back you can see that quickly gets um, out of control so that's why I tend to stay around the 40 range uh, because for me that's uh, at distance at least um, it's quite because you can imagine you can imagine how much that adds up over distance uh, so that's pretty much it. That's your that's your spray. Now, obviously, we've used um, the muzzle line trace. Now, the only difference you'd need to do for that is get your actor's um, location, get your actor forward vector, um, get your weapon range, get that, do a multiply on this. Oh, not split, convert. I'll tell you what, I can just drag that into there like that. Add these two together. And there you've got a very basic line trace. So that'll come from the camera or the actor location. There's another way you can do it as well is get player camera manager. This is, this is um, suited for first person shooters. Uh, so get your camera manager and just plug that into there. Just like that. That'll come from the exact center of the screen and go straight forward into the center of the screen. So that's a that's a nice handy line trace for you there. So yeah, if you're not gonna follow the muzzle method, um, I think a lot of weapons these days are skeletal meshes rather than static meshes. Um, and you can set up sockets. If you go to the skeletal um, view of your weapon, you can add a socket at the end of the barrel uh, and just call it muzzle. And, and then you can be set up just like that. So, that's pretty much it. Um, if you're not using the ALS template, what I'll probably say, instead of this this rotation mode here, when it's set to 2, is to uh, just to check, are you aiming? Uh, what you could actually do is you could set up something like this. Just when the right mouse button is pressed, you have a boolean that says aiming is yes or no. Uh, this is set up on this for something else, but uh, I won't get into that. Um so um, and when you release the key it's false and then all you want to do is just replace this condition here with 
uh, are we aiming just like that and that'll do the exact same so only only work when we're aiming and I guess the other thing you could do for only when you've got a weapon equipped is let's say this weapon mesh is blank when you don't have a weapon equipped but when you do have a weapon equipped you're actually changing the mesh there to uh, a weapon what you could do is just do um, get skeletal asset like that and then do uh, is valid that way what you're doing is if a skeletal mesh asset is not there it won't be valid and you won't be able to continue uh, and that should function the same uh, and that's pretty much it to be honest so uh, this is the weapon spray what i might do i'm not promising anything here is i might look at ways of uh, sort of tweaking the numbers or making uh, the numbers work towards a pattern so if you only want to go up and down well i mean up and down should be relatively straightforward anyway i think if you just disconnect uh, these two i, I guess the, the the z wouldn't matter too much um this should make a more of a, a linear spray uh, so it should be pretty accurate okay i might have done the wrong one is it going to be the x instead of the y yeah pretty much so that's going to be up or down um but again i'm i'll I'm, I probably will, but I don't know when. I, I might have a look at doing sort of like spray patterns. Um, off the top of my head, I'm not too sure how I'd go about that. But it's something to look into. If this was helpful at all, um, feel free to let me know down in the comments or even consider giving me a, a, a like, a thumbs up. Um, if you dislike it, please let me know in the comments why. Um, that would really help me sort of learn from it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it to be fair. Oh, Discord link down below if you want to join the channel. Loads of us now, um, and I'm always posting bits and pieces in there, answering questions. So who knows, you might come and learn something anyway. Um, you don't have to chat, it doesn't matter. You can just lurk and have a, have a check. Um, subscribe if you want to, but I'll leave that with you. And that's enough rambling from me. Thank you very much. Goodbye.